Okay, once again, let's transform this resolve reconcile explain question to a weakening question. So first, just change up the question stem, which one of the following if true would most weaken the argument above. And now we have to apply the three step procedure. Do you remember what those three steps are? First, we identify a claim. And uh, this is kind of, uh, you might have to play around with this a bit before you find uh, a claim that works. But once you identify the claim, you slap a negation on it. And after you slap a negation on it, you make it the conclusion claim and you make and you couch it in some kind of like predictive or expectation language, right? So look, when a forest is subject to acid rain, the calcium level in the soil declines, fine. Spruce, fir, sugar maples all need calcium to survive. This is going to be my target sentence. This is going to be my target claim. I'm going to say, therefore, therefore, one would expect that, and you have to negate this, one would, have to, one would expect that sugar maples in forests that receive significant acid rain are not much more likely to show signs of decline consistent with calcium deficiency than are spruces or firs and such forests. This is such a wordy way of saying it. We can, sim we can simplify this by just saying, Therefore, we expect what? Therefore, we expect uh, sugar maples, spruces, and firs in forests which receive significant acid rain to equally, right? To roughly equally show or not show, show slash not show signs of decline consistent with calcium deficiency. That's it, right? So we j because we know that spruce, fir, sugar maple all need calcium to survive, and this is our premise set. We make this conclusion that, well, you know, if they all need calcium to survive, then those three trees are going to show roughly the same signs of decline or not decline when they are in a forest that received a lot of acid rain. Right. It's just the negation. Remember, like, the, at the core of it, the original claim was that it's not equal, right? And it's not equal weighted against sugar maples. Sugar maples will show more signs of decline. Right, so here you just want to say, no, they're going to show about the same amount of decline, right? That's the conclusion. Now, again, this is just, it's an argument, right? Like, uh, given what I know about uh, how acid rain and calcium and these trees work, I don't really, I'm not in a good position to judge whether this is a good argument, right? I mean, the premises here give some support to the conclusion. Is it great support? It's not great support, but I can't really tell you why, right? So once again, answer choice C calls out an assumption that this argument makes. Right? Answer choice C, you really could have called out this assumption in so many different ways, but first let's look at the way C calls out this assumption, and then I'll talk about the other ways. C says, spruces and firs, unlike sugar maples, right? So first of all, it just introduces different. These two things are not like this thing, because these two latter things, they can extract calcium from a mineral compound that's common in soil, which is not affected by acid rain, which means even when there's acid rain, even when the soil is calcium deficient, Spruces and firs have another source to tap for calcium that sugar maples don't. So now I no longer have reason to believe that they're equally going to show sign, show or not show signs of decline. I think now, given that C is true, I'm, I'm probably going to bet on sugar maples showing signs of decline more so than spruces and firs. Right? So C works really well in weakening this argument. But like I said, it's not the only way to weaken this argument. Do you recall all the other hypotheses we came up with? Any one of them could have worked as well, right? You could have said answer choice D. Here's another answer choice that works. Sugar maples just happen to get a higher dose of acid rain, right? And this was the hypothesis that we had contemplated earlier when we talked about how you know, you don't want to assume uniformity in how the acid rain hits the forest, right? It depends on the canopy. It depends on the uh, landscape, the topography. Maybe acid rain pools in certain areas, right? So maybe somehow sugar maples get a higher dose of acid rain. If this were true, you see, now despite the fact that all of uh, all three of these trees need calcium to survive, I no longer have reason to believe that they're all going to be equally affected. In fact, now I have reason to believe that they're not going to be equally affected, that sugar maples will be differentially and more severely affected, right? So it just, it does the same thing that C does, which is gets in the way of this premise conclusion space. It, it, it turns an assumption on its head, right? The assumption of uniformity of acid rain falling, it turns that assumption on its head. Okay, good. So hopefully you're starting to see, you're starting to see how uh, we can turn RRE questions into weakening questions.